Next item on this afternoon's agenda is item number nine, which is ordinance number 2012-200. And would authorize the special use of the property known as 407 South Cherry Street for the purpose of permitting multifamily use and the property known at, as 811 Alamo Street for the purpose of establishing a single family dwelling lot and a lot to be used for surface parking accessory to a multifamily use on certain terms and conditions. And Mr. Matthew Ebinger, a planner in our office, will be presenting this case to you this afternoon. Welcome, sir. Good afternoon, Planning Commission. The subject property consists of two parcels. The first is 407 South Cherry Street, shown on the right. <coughs> and there the 407 South Cherry Street is a parcel of 6,076 square feet. It contains a three-story building that is itself approximately 18,600 square feet. It was built in approximately 1890 based on the tax assessment records and historically had been used in the road cleaning and warehousing facility. Uh, there is an alley in common to the south of the building. And there was a question as to the ownership of the alley. And so that portion of the property was excluded from the special use permit itself. So all, all development as part of this permit would not affect the alley between the building and the, the property to the south of it. The second parcel is 811 Albemarle Street that is located there as indicated, it is a vacant parcel of approximately 4,400 square feet. Current zoning of both parcels is R7. <coughs> it should be noted that the Victory Road building itself, um, based on the non-conforming rights from the previous use of the property, would allow um, six multifamily units without any sort of special approvals. So bear that in mind as we uh, go through this presentation. Master plan land use, as you can see, it is downtown uh, general urban area. This is part of the downtown portion of the master plan. As part of the general urban area, uh, no residential density ranges were specified in the plan, um, but the area is characterized by medium density, mixed use development, which is distributed along medium sized blocks, which is what we see with this development. Specifically for Oregon Hill, the downtown plan stresses a focus on the rehabilitation of blighted and vacant buildings. And again, this is an adaptive reuse project of an existing building, which, though I wouldn't call it blighted necessarily, is a vacant building which has been the victim of recent uh, vandalizing and graffiti. Now, it should also be noted the property is part of the Oregon Hill National Historic District, and again, this would uh, be in keeping with that. Also, the addition of a single-family residence on the 811 uh, Albemarle Street parcel would also further reinforce the historic character of the neighborhood by completing the streetscape along that block of Albemarle. As you can see from the images, there is a graffiti issue as already stated. This is the Victory Road building. This is the vacant parcel at Albemarle Street. You can see the side of the Victory Road building behind the parcel. In terms of the plans, one set of plans was introduced to Council on October 22nd of last year. The plans have since been amended, and so the plans we're showing you today are the amended plans. And these plans are amended based on feedback from the community as well as from staff. Here you see the layout of the building. It has 12 units, 4 units per floor. Here are the plans for the single family detached residential house. Again, it's generally in keeping with the historic character of the neighborhood. It contains three bedrooms. This is the overall site plan for the properties. And as you can see, the the building they're adding would be a, a visual screening of the parking area and also the trash enclosure that's being provided for the apartment building. And so, again, reinforcing the historic quality of the neighborhood rather than having the parking and the trash visible, it will be screened from view by the, by the house as well as fencing. And to summarize the changes from the introduced plans versus the plans that are amended and shown to you today, the introduced plans had a total of 18 units with 26 bedrooms. Uh, the amended plans have reduced that to 12 units with 21 bedrooms. The introduced plan showed one studio, 
nine one-bedroom units and eight two-bedroom units. Uh, the amended plans are showing three one-bedroom units and nine two-bedroom units. And as one would expect, the area sizes of the units have increased since the number of units has decreased. Are the conditions of the ordinance? No more than 12 multifamily units in the Victor Road building, uh, 21 bedrooms, and again, the introduced ordinance that was 18 units. The 811 Albemarle parcel would be um, divided into two lots. The first lot would front an Albemarle Street and contain the single <coughs> detached dwelling. The second lot would contain the trash enclosure and the eight parking, eight space parking area that would be accessory to the Victor Road building. And that would be a separate parcel fronting the alleys to the rear of the single family residence. Uh, two wall signs are also being allowed by the special use permit ordinance. This is in addition to what is normally approved by the zoning uh, ordinance. Each would be no greater than seven and a half square feet and they would be affixed to the northern facade of the building. Basically, basically there are two signs on both sides of the entrance to the building. Uh, four signs were originally shown in the introduced ordinance, but that's because there were two entrances on the building that's been reduced to one entrance, and so we um, have shown only two wall signs being included as opposed to the original four. And staff findings, the parking provision, there are eight off-street parking spaces being provided for the multifamily use, and they are again on the 811 Albemarle Street parcel. Also, five on-street parking spaces have been credited to the development, four of those on South Cherry Street and one on Albemarle Street. And this is following the methodology in the RF1 and RF2 parking requirements for the Riverfront District in which space on the public right-of-way could be credited or accounted for uh, development. It's not specifically being striped or dedicated or reserved for this building, but will be credited to it. In terms of parking studies, two were conducted by the applicant, the first in the spring of 2012. The majority of the dates of which the data was collected was now in BC as a full session. And so the neighborhood requested that a new parking study be conducted, uh, which was done in October, I'm sorry, in August uh, 28th of last year when classes were in session. And the, the parking study indicates that based on their data collection, which was taken from 5 to 6 a.m., 1 to 2 p.m., and 9.30 to 10.30 p.m., that there would be sufficient parking, not only for the four spaces that are credited, but also essentially for all of the units, um, for a one-to-one -one ratio of units to parking, as well as even additional demand could be accommodated on the right-of-way. Again, we are focusing only on four, but the parking study indicates that there is capacity for additional parking from that. As you can see from the images, this is South Cherry Street facing south. The Victory Rug building is approximately <laughs> there. This image was taken on October 12th of last year. And this is the same street facing north. Uh, picture taken September 25th, 2012. That is the Victory Rug building. Again, showing that there is a a general, general amount of parking space available. This image was taken on October 13th. It was during the Riffin Folk Festival, and so as you can see, and as you would expect, there is less parking available when such a large event is going on in proximity to the, to the area. Uh, but it's interesting to note that even with all the parking on both sides, vehicular traffic was not impeded by the parking. And the day before the festival, on October 12th, again, there is an that uh, from where the building is, there is parking available on the right. In terms of the width of the right of way of the 400 block of South Cherry Street, there was some discussion on the adequacy of the width. And we have discussed the issue with uh, Public Works as well as the Fire Department, and we've all come to agreement that the right of way, while narrow, is sufficient to support parking on both sides of the street as well as one lane of, of traffic. As you can see, the right-of-way is about 28 feet south of the Victory Road building, narrows to 26 to 27 in front of the building, 
and then narrows further to about 23 feet at the intersection with Albemarle Street. Again, this is a narrow right of way. It's not unheard of in the city. Um, other areas include Catherine Street in Jackson Ward and Jacqueline Street in Randolph that have a, a similar right of way width and similar parking and traffic patterns. I do have images of those further on if you do want to see the, the right of way images. Also to note, uh, there are only five parcels that front on the 400 block of South Cherry Street, one of which is Hollywood Cemetery. And so based on that, that small number compared to the, the 22 parcels, for example, on the Laurel Street block that front on the road, we believe that the frontage in front of the Victory Road building as well as the frontage opposite Cherry Street along Hollywood Cemetery could be used in calculating the four spaces that were credited towards the towards the development. Again, normally it's just for the frontage in front of the building, but based on the small number of, of parcels fronting the right of way, we thought it reasonable to, to include both sides of the right of way. That number was reduced by two um, based on accommodations made with the fire department to allow 46 feet to be reserved for access by fire apparatus. Also, the density of the neighborhood, uh, the blocks surrounding the subject property have a density ranging from about 11 uh, units per acre up to 16 units per acre. Uh, the block with 11 units per acre should be noted that approximately one acre of it is used by open space as well as a large church. Uh, the densities proposed by the original plans as introduced would be 20 units per acre. Um, however, the amended plans showing the 12 units in one single family residence would be 17 and a half units per acre. So it is generally in keeping with the density of the, of the overall neighborhood. It's also important to note that there are several major changes that were made from the original submission that was made earlier last year, even before the introduction. Um, as we stated already, there was a reduction in the number of units and bedrooms. Single family detached house was not originally shown. It was a parking area that was fronting on Albemarle Street. And again, having a single family house as opposed to a parking area certainly, we believe, something better for the streetscape of Albemarle Street than, than a parking area. A street tree was also included on Albemarle Street in front of the house. And all HVAC units have been placed on the roof of the Victory Rec building and will not be visible from the right of way. So recommendation, staff finds that with the conditions of the amended ordinance, the safeguards contained within the city charter relative to the granting of special use permits are met, and therefore staff recommends approval of the special use permit request as amended and presented here uh, to the planning commission on January 7th. Uh, I'm available to answer any questions you have. Our applicant is also here, and I believe other staff members are here. Are there questions of the Good question. Um, the single family house, is that going to be a rental or is that going to be for sale? I believe it will be sold. It hasn't even been decided. Okay, that's to be determined. Okay. Further questions? Okay. Thank you. Are you aware of any other multi family buildings in, on this side of Oregon Hill? There are some duplex and triplex situations, but I'm not aware of anything of, of this scale. The, At least new, in the immediate blocks around the building. Right. But all the new, new relatively new development that overlooks um, the river, even though I know that they're all, I think they're all townhouses for sale. I mean, it still has this, they're all attached, so it's really you know, so, you know, not the not a long time, but in terms of de density, I think it's pretty similar. I think this is an existing building. I think if it were a new building, it would be a, a very different discussion that we're having. But it's an existing, fairly large structure. Other questions? Thank you very much. All right, we'll now go to the public hearing on this matter. Are there persons here who would like to speak in favor of item 9? Good afternoon. I'm, uh, I'm Todd Woodson. I'm the Executive Director of the Oregon Hill Home Improvement Council, and I'm the Treasurer of the <coughs> Oregon Hill Neighborhood Association. 
Um, this was a really rough negotiation for us. Uh, any way you look at it, um, the neighborhood is going to be faced with hardship with the parking. Uh, but we are very anxious to see this uh, building developed. Um, uh, the staff mentioned this was built in 1890, and uh, uh, historically speaking, the streetcars began the year before that. So I'm assuming that this building was built in part to take advantage of that situation, and consequently there was no on-site space for car parking or uh, I guess the, the horse and buggies at the time could just pull right up to the uh, to the side and and there was plenty of good good transportation with the streetcars um, we uh, we do appreciate the fact that the number of bedrooms has been reduced and uh, and like I said we are very excited to see this property improved upon and maintained uh, as of this morning, uh, <coughs> uh, we did get an agreement with the developer uh, that there will be an amendment to the lease that there will be no rentals to undergraduates with the exception of uh, uh, military veterans or married couples that are going to, to school. Um, by nature, we're not against students in, in Oregon Hill, but um, we feel that, uh, that we really need uh, families with children going to public schools. We have two fabulous uh, facilities in Oregon Hill, uh, the award-winning Open High, as well as, uh, as St. Andrew's School, and we've got Clark Springs nearby. Um, to wrap this up, uh, although it does present a hardship for us uh, in, in the parking situation. Uh, we feel, both the Neighborhood Association and OHIC, that uh, the developer has met uh, the minimum uh, uh, requirements to, to move forward with this project. Uh, and we would certainly like to thank uh, Mr. Olinger, well, um, Mr. Uh, Ebinger, and uh, Laurie Markham. Markham, they've done excellent, excellent job in They've been so patient uh, for a community that uh, that had a lot of questions um, regarding this. They, they work so diligently. And um, we'd also like to thank uh, Parker Angelasto, who worked uh, so hard to, to, to bring this uh, into a, uh, I won't say it's a great agreement, but it's a palatable agreement. And um, so we're anxious to move forward. Uh, thank you. Else speak in favor? Yes. Hi, I'm Bruce Milam, and I live in the Museum District. I'm here to speak to Mr. Blunden both as a, a friend but also as a professional. I'm Vice President of Kyers International. I'm a multifamily specialist, been brokering properties in Richmond for 13 years. I've done seven deals with Guy. This was not one of them. I've sold him land for approximately 900 apartment units in Henrico and Chesterfield County and in Manchester. The latest project, which you'll know of, is uh, called Link Manchester Apartments, 178 units right across the Manchester Bridge in front of the UPS building. And I'll tell you that Guy does what he says he's going to do. And if he says it's going to be a high quality building, in every case it's been, it's a high quality building and it's well maintained. I think you can count on it. I think the citizens of Oregon Hill can count on it. They'll look back on this 10 years, 20 years, and it'll be the same good building that he produces from day one. He's a, he's a high-quality developer, and I don't say that about all my clients. So thank you very much. My name is Jimmy Blackford, and I want to say good to hell to you, uh, Mr. Law, because um, in the early 70s, um, I was in a Cub Scout den with your uh, with your son, I think, and I remember you uh, driving us to Fort Lee, so it's been a long time since I've been able to greet you again. Um, I've been living in Richmond since 1959, and I own a house in uh, 310 South Cherry Street, 
and I appreciate all the um, all the support that the city and groups like you give our neighborhood. Um, the circumstance of having lots of undergraduate students in our neighborhood is a weighty circumstance, and I think that their behavior is actually a major factor that prevents uh, families wanting to move in. Um, they're college students, and particularly those who have chosen to live in Oregon Hill, um, they choose the neighborhood for a reason. And um, their behavior isn't, is, is troubling to me sometimes, and um, that's why we're seeking very strongly to have the stipulation that undergraduate students will not be um, tenants in this building. Um, I oppose the SUP because the negotiation that we were, the, the concession that we were given by the developer is not restrictive enough. If you read the wording, it says clearly responsible adults, uh, such as military veterans or people with family, but that's, such as is not a restrictive phrase. And I think that an 18-year-old college student who's in good standing with the university could be legally interpreted to be um, you know, within the restrictions of that phrase. I would like for the developer to be willing to amend that phrase to be more restrictive so that um, most any undergraduate would not be allowed to rent in, the, in this property. Um, that's really the, 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 the crux of, of my concern here. Um, I want to close by saying that I'm happy that this property will be developed. I think, you know, the chance of Increasing the number of units in the city of Richmond, um, with the all of the spending money and all the tax advantages that, that that will ensue, is a really great is a really great opportunity, and I want this to happen. So thank you for all your work. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Is there anyone else speaking in favor? I'm Gabe London. I'm the applicant. Um, I certainly agree with Todd. This has been a long, uh, arduous uh, set of negotiations. I'm, I'm very pleased to have the uh, Oregon Hill Neighborhood Association uh, uh, be in agreement on the development. Uh, as you can see, I think these are going to be very unusually large apartments, two bedrooms up to 1,700, one bedroom up to 1,300. Um, they'll be finished in we just finished a historic uh, rehab 601 Park Street in Charlottesville. It's a beautiful building. They'll be finished in very much the same way. High quality furnishings, high quality appliances. This building is a beautiful building with lots of natural light. Um, I, I think this will be a really splendid uh, historic rehab. Um, I also thank um, Lori and Matthew and Parker Agilasto. There's, there's been a lot gone into this. Um, can I answer any questions on anything? Are there questions? I do have a question. What do you think the rent uh, on these to be? Well, they're on a per square foot basis. They're not going to be as high as you might see elsewhere because the apartments are so large. Um, I think um, you know around thirteen to eighteen hundred dollars a month, something like that. You can't write restrictions into a lease like that, can you? I'm not a lawyer. I know some other people have that training here, but that seems discriminatory and problematic. Uh, I can speak to that just a shade. Uh, I have been speaking to my lawyer. College students are not a protected class. It is very touchy <laughs> how you or word this thing, because if you said anybody under 21, that's age discrimination. Uh, it can be done. It, it happens. Uh, it just has to be done with an eye toward fair housing and age discrimination and, and uh, equal opportunity. It, it, it's a little bit of a minefield, but it can be done. And it's in the process of being done. And, and just for the record, that, this is a, that is a private agreement that the developer has negotiated with the neighborhood. It is not something that is in the special use permit or something that the city would sure, uh, understandably. <laughs> All the minds and hearts clear on that issue? Are the questions of the presenter? Thank you, sir.
you, sir. Thank you. Next speaker, please. Okay. Looks like that completes the list of those who are in favor. All those who would like to speak in opposition, please come forward. All persons who wish to speak in opposition, I ask you to stand. Hello, um, thank you for giving us a chance to talk to you all. I greatly, greatly appreciate the work that um, my neighbors have uh, been going through to work with Mr. Blunden, and I am much happier about the statement, the agreement that we will not have people, um, college students leasing. But for the record, my name is Caroline Cox, and I live at 430 South Laurel Street, which is pretty close to being well, it's on the alley and slightly, uh, slightly to the left, I guess, of the uh, Victory Rug. And I have some real serious concerns because my concern, like my, my friend over there who spoke in favor, is that the language is not quite strong enough for the leasing arrangement. Um, we haven't, I haven't seen the little uh, the agreement that was made yet because they just brought the, the, um, the agreement here now. And so I would also like to make sure that there is no subleasing, subleasing to students. So that is one of my concerns. Um, another concern that I have is the mention that that property on Albemarle, once the townhouse is built, could be for sale. And it is my understanding from looking at the plans that uh, the actual um, open space that is required by Richmond City Code, 114-1050.1, um, is actually located in the fenced-in area behind the townhouse so that the apartments will not have access to that open space, which actually will force any smokers or people who like to put out a lawn chair into the alleyway which abuts my house. And my experience with cigarette smokers is they do like this, and they flick the cigarettes. And as a consequence, uh, things catch on fire. I've seen nine buildings come down in my 16 years in Oregon Hill, and I've seen three catch on fire, and one of them was my next door neighbor's house. So I have a very serious concern about fire accessibility. I know that we've talked um, to the, uh, um, the fire chief about this, but I also have a concern about handicap accessibility. Currently, there's an elevator in that building which will need to be removed according to these specific plans. And you're not supposed to, under state law, actually make a building less accessible than it was previously. I realize that it's a freight elevator, but it still would make that accessible to older or handicapped accessible adults. Um, and um, it seems to me that since my husband is a disability advocate, he's not had a chance to arrive here yet, but they are checking into the state law that would actually enable this to be taken out of the building, which would further facilitate, by the way, only renting to people who are able to climb those stairs, which includes students. Um, so those are my concerns. My concerns would be alleviated by, relieve, by taking that fence off from behind the um, property and actually continuing for that piece of property to be a part of the, um, of the uh, um, apartment townhouse complex so that they would have that open space. Um, currently, if they were to keep that as part of their, um, their space, they would have, uh, I believe it is um, it, around 1,500 square feet for at least the people to hang out. Um, the other additional to the danger of the handicapped accessibility and potential for fire that I am very concerned about is the fact that without that actual access for an open space in that area, um, that the smokers will come in and if they don't catch us on fire, they'll wake us up all night and they'll wake up the families that directly abut that area. Um, and we have it happening already. Many of us have moved into the backs of our house so that we can sleep through the night because the students keep us up all night long. So um, these are my concerns. They could be alleviated in further discussions with the developer. Um, I'd like to you know, thank him for talking with us so far, but I still have these concerns. Again, handicapped accessibility with the elevator and subleasing potential to the students, not to mention the open space issue. 
So thank you for your time. Good afternoon. My name is Lee Campbell. Um, I'm a resident of Oregon Hill. I have been off and on since 2000. I have also worked in Oregon Hill for over a decade. I live at 811 Idlewood Avenue, directly a block away from this property. Um, I'm not speaking about legalities. This is somewhat purely selfish. Um, I find it incredibly difficult to believe that the parking situation will be copacetic. Uh, I am lucky to go to the grocery store on my day off and come home and have a place to park. Uh, with the influx of students every semester, we get more and more, and Oregon Hill is where they park if they don't want to pay for the parking decks. So I just I think that it's completely unfeasible that this whole parking situation will iron itself out. And then on a personal level, Oregon Hill is an incredibly unique neighborhood and I want to keep it that way. I don't think that an apartment building is in fitting. There is no building like that in Oregon Hill. Yes, there are the new townhouses that were put up, but there's nothing like a 12 unit complex in Oregon Hill. You can go anywhere else in the FAN, the museum, museum district, anywhere else in the city of Richmond and find that. That's what makes Oregon Hill unique, and I like to keep it that way. That's it. Thank you. Thank you. Next speaker. My name is Scott Berger. I'm an assistant city of Richmond, and I'm a resident of Oregon Hill. Uh, my wife and I live on the 600 block of South Laurel Street. Um, I'm very happy that there's been negotiation and, and supposedly an agreement between the neighborhood association and the developer. I'm very much in favor of that. I would point to that to anyone who says that our neighborhood is unreasonable, what we expect. I think we've been very reasonable. And I'm speaking right now to go over some of the points that I think you know the neighborhood has had, and, and the planner and, and the city have had to overcome here. Um, section 114-1050 of the city code says that city council may authorize the issuance of special use permits whenever council finds that the proposed use will not, number two, tend to create congestion in the streets, roads, alleys, and other public ways and places in the area involved. Number three, create hazards from fire. This street is so narrow that it will cause congestion and may prohibit fire truck access that would create a hazard from fire. Hollywood Cemetery buses also park on this block. Um, you know, I think you all remember some of the debate over the uh, Student Rec Center further up on Cherry Street, some of the concerns there. Those haven't been alleviated. Uh, you know, we walk, my wife and I walk our, our travel up Cherry Street all the time. It's one of the few ways to have um, egress from the neighborhood. And I'm very concerned about the possibility of an emergency. Um, one off-street parking space per unit as required by the city code should be the re minimum requirement in our neighborhood that is impacted so much by VCU. Uh, the city staff cr incorrectly cited the riverfront district zoning regulations to support using some on-street parking to satisfy the off-street parking requirements. Uh, this is a misapplication of the zoning code since Oregon Hill is not in the riverfront district. We fought very hard for our current zoning, and I, I want to reiterate that. But even if we were in the Riverfront District, only two on-street parking spaces would be applied to this project. The frontage of the building is only 40 feet wide, and the Riverfront District would allow two spaces fronting the building, but the staff applied three spaces. So um, I want to pass around this picture. I know you've seen, you've heard from the city about the street. I know you've seen the, their chart, but I also want to show this picture, which shows just exactly how narrow it gets. If God forbid someone hurts themselves in Holly Street Playground, Riverfront, down on the 600 block where I live, my wife and I live, then we have to we have to rely on an ambulance being able to get out of the neighborhood using this road. So this is the sort of thing that you know we're very concerned about. Again, you know, like many of my neighbors have said, we are grateful for the, the attention, we are grateful for the work. Um, we look forward to the building being renovated. Um, and being used again, um, we are being reasonable in our expectations, and I'd like you to please keep that reason in mind. Thank you. Thank you, Chair. All right, that concludes the public um, hearing. Um, I'm sorry, he just arrived. Is it possible? Right, sir. Okay, thank you.
Good afternoon. Um, you know, my name's uh, John Richmond. I live on South, in the 400 block of South Laurel Street, uh, directly, almost directly across the alley from the uh, proposed development. Um, I just got off of work, which is down that way. And so, basically, uh, what's been what's been going on with this development is. Uh, is when the when the development group first came to the neighborhood we suggested um, elderly housing because the city code requires only half of the off-street parking for elderly housing and for commercial use of the first building um, or the first story of the building and a commercial use what that would do it would be complementary parking so um, basically if you had uh, say six commercial units and six residential units. The six commercial units would take up parking during the day, six residential units would take it up at night. So that's one reason why we suggested commercial as a possible use of some of the, um, of some of the building. And getting back to elderly housing again, elderly housing or elder housing requires by, by city code only half of the off-street parking. And that again, as you've probably heard, is one of our main concerns. Um, also, elderly housing and commercial use would require a working elevator, and um, and Mr. Blunden, one of the development groups, said that he was planning to remove the existing freight elevator that's been in the building for over 60 years, and it actually is a working elevator, uh, and um, and I don't know of the inspection records, but um, but our assumption is it's passed annual inspections, or at least it did so before the. Uh, late 2011 purchase of the property. Now according to section 3411.3 of the 2009 Virginia Construction Code, alterations shall not reduce or have effect or have the effect of reducing the accessibility of a building. And removing that elevator would have the effect of reducing the accessibility of the building for elderly people and also for people with disabilities. Um, and we actually have the Virginia Organization for Protection and Advocacy looking into this question uh, you know, at the moment. Um, you know, we also asked the Planning Commission to insist that the Victory Building not be made less accessible during the alteration by removal of the elevator. Um, the removal of the elevator may render that building only useful as an off-campus dorm. Um, you know, basically, only healthy people who can move around may be able to get around up and down the stairs in that building. So again, we asked the Planning Commission to uh, consider a requirement for an elevator in that building. And I believe also that, uh, the, as a final thought, the um, Americans with Disabilities Act requires an elevator, a functioning elevator, to be placed in there as well. Um, you know, 28 CFR. Part 36, subpart D, uh, says that um, under new construction and alterations, that if a building has less than three stories and less than 3,000 square feet per floor, that an elevator is not required. Victory Rug exceeds both aspects. It has three floors and over 5,000 square feet per floor. So, um, so. Yeah, we, um, we ask for those considerations in addition to the others you have just heard. Right, thank you very much. Thank you. So that's the last one. The person speaking opposition. Great. The public hearing is now closed. We're back to the commission. Commission, what is your question? Got a quick question before we move forward. I forgot to ask this earlier of staff. Um, the residential property, does that need to be built within the two year, or permitted within the two year? The, the lot has to be created within two years, but there's no um, time frame for the construction of this. Okay, just the construction drawings for the subdivision or the creation of the lot. Okay. Great, thank you. I would move approval of the special use, uh, special use permit as amended, presented to the Planning Commission today. Second. Second. It's been moved and second that this item to be approved. Are there questions on the motion or any discussion? All in favor, by the user sign. 
Thank you. 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 Thank you.